Again, my name is Cameron Zorgdreger, and I'm working with Web20Training.com and with Develop Intelligence. Today we're going to be talking about AJAX Demystified. My, my hope is that we'll be able to get through uh, some good foundations of AJAX to help us dive in and figure out what, what's going on with this new kind of technology and conglomeration of technologies out on the web right now. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, chime in. You should have a little hand button. Um, and otherwise, you can just shout them out to me too. That's okay. No problem with that. Um, if you need to mute your phone line and you don't have a mute on your phone, go ahead and press star 6, and then star 7 will unmute you. And if you have any questions that you need tech help with, feel free to dial 1-800-843-9166, and that's ReadyTalk, and they'll help you out with the technical issues if you're facing any. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today, I said, is AJAX. Uh, our topics that we're going to cover are Introduction to Rich Internet Applications, or otherwise referred to as RIAs. Um, we're going to talk about what is AJAX, and it's not going to be your typical household cleaner. Uh, we're going to go much more in depth about, about how we actually use AJAX on the Internet today, and I'll define what that term is coming up in a few slides too. And then we're going to look a little bit at AJAX development and what I call the magic within AJAX. And then the last part of the conversation I want to have today is going to deal with third-party libraries, third-party JavaScript libraries to be specific, and uh, just talking about how we don't want to go reinventing the wheel with our JavaScript development, so why it's good to possibly think about using a third-party library. So our objectives, when we're all done with this class, when it's all said and done, when it's all over, you should be able to understand the significance of, of RIAs or RIAs. You should be able to comprehend the difference between AJAX and traditional web programming. And you should have a pretty good base knowledge of writing AJAX, pretty simple AJAX. And then you should also uh, possess some insight into choosing a JavaScript library. So let's talk just a little bit about the history of web development, only, only a little bit uh, for the focus of how in the world did we get to, to RIAs. Um, so programming started out with this client-server model that was the uh, original push to rich Internet applications and eventually to, to using AJAX with that. Uh, and we can take a look in the past at these like client light server heavy models that we can talk about. Uh, this is a lot of the way that programming has been done in the past uh, past 10 years. That there would be CGI scripts, ASP, active server pages, JSP, Java server pages, and PHP. And uh, part, partly with this too we'd call what we have is lightweight HTML. Um, what I mean by that is that the server, the server in this case holds most of the information um, about what's going on with the application. It holds variables, session variables, states, and it passes a lot of content and data to a client when there's a client-server interaction. All right, so we can have a lightweight HTML client, or another way maybe to say that is like a, a dumb browser. The browser doesn't really have to do much. It just is going to spit out the information that's given back to it from the server. There's a, been a little bit of shift in the last few years um, that does more client-heavy and server-heavy development, and that's where we're using, uh, again, ASP, JSP, and PHP servers, but they're going to be not only serving up uh, data and content, they're now also going to be serving up uh, applets and Flash. Applets aren't used as much today, but um, Flash for sure is used, and that's like a, a heavier media uh, that is putting more weight on the client. I would say that applets and Flash, you could call those first generation uh, rich Internet applications. So just to help better define a rich Internet application, uh, we can think of it, breaking it down in its three words. First, the rich aspect of it. Um, when we use that word, we're saying that we want to kind of get a similar, an application with a similar interface to what we see on our desktop. So whatever we can do on our desktop, it would be great if we could actually do that on the web. Um, you know, currently, if, you're, if we're not using AJAX on the web, most of our, um, or a rich, inter rich Internet application, most of the interaction is only done through links, you know, following link rabbit holes, wherever, and through form submissions. 
Otherwise, you can't really do much. Um, and so with Rich, again, we just want to model what a desktop could do. And Internet, I think that's self-explanatory, something that's going to be the tool that's going to connect our applications to our server, our client to our server. And then we have uh, an application also. And by application, um, I mean that we're not just looking at uh, like a single document that's getting served up that people can just see and read information about, but something that they can actually um, play with data, uh, change data, view data back from the server. And uh, you know, the, the thing that we really want to get to is that when a client or a user is using our applications that we're developing, that they would actually feel like they're working on a, a desktop environment. You know, when they're when they're scrolling around or playing with information, that it would seem like this server and this database are connected right to them. That there's no hesitation, there's no waiting, there's no like form submitting and then stalling and waiting 30 seconds sometimes to to bring back information. We want to get to a point where everything is seamless. And that's, that's our hope with rich Internet applications. So before we dive in too much, let's talk a little bit about some business drivers for RIAs. Um, and then we'll move also into some business costs for RIAs. So business drivers, uh, there are a couple that come to, to mind when I think about this. One is that uh, the best benefit of doing rich Internet applications is for improving web user experience. Uh, if we can improve the web user experience, we can lessen the steps it's going to take to complete tasks. We can uh, lessen our errors by the users. If they have less steps, they're going to have less errors. And if there are less steps and there are less errors, there's going to be a lot less time consumed by the, the user that's, that's using our applications, whether it would be out a public application for somebody to get used to or whether it be a private application that we have people working on ourselves. Um, the second business driver is that we're really, we really can bring a similar web and desktop user interface together. And a great thing about this is it's going to lower training costs because if we have people that are used to using desktop applications, um, making a similar web application is going to uh, be a, quite a benefit to them. And if we have lower training costs, that means that's going to be a quicker turnaround and there's going to be faster productivity. And also, if we've got the similar feel, we're going to have less support requests. We're not going to be spending so much time with our employees, um, having them try to figure out what's actually going on or what they should be able to be doing on the web application. Uh, another business driver is that we can improve the application responsiveness. Now, uh, this is important because we can now have uninterrupted workflow and less waiting in between, as I was saying, you know, we don't want to just submit something and have to wait 30 or 40 seconds for something to come back to us um, and for a whole page to refresh and for the user to have to get reacclimated to what's going on on that page. So that's going to be great for un making an uninterrupted workflow. And part of the another thing about responsiveness is that we can uh, do error checking on the fly. If some information is, is inputted and it's messed up, we can have an error generated right back uh, similar to what we can do on a desktop, so that there's not so much work later on trying to figure out if there have been errors. Um, we can try to write that into our code. And then the, the last business driver is reducing the network demands. Um, a key part of AJAX that we're going to talk about is that there's just little bits of information that are sent from the server to the client. Sometimes it is larger, but nothing like sending a whole page back and forth. So we're really going to be minimizing how much data is transmitted. Uh, by doing, the reason we can do that is because we're only going to be transmitting relevant information back and forth. We're not going to be transmitting um, all the headers and the footers of a page, just what we really need to get to the server and get back to the server, from the server to the client. So that's going to definitely reduce the network demands that we have um, with our applications.